Caligula, born Gaius Julius Caesar Germanicus, came into power as Rome's third emperor in 37 AD. Now the thing is, when you think about Rome, you imagine order, grandeur, and legions of soldiers all marching to the sound of civilization's drum, right? Well, Caligula decided he wanted to play a different tune, a chaotic, dissonant one. He was like the guy who inherits a solid family business, and within a year, turns it into an outlandish nightclub, where the bouncers wear togas and lions roam the dance floor. But let's backtrack a little. Caligula wasn't always the madman history remembers. When he took the throne at the age of 24, after the death of the elderly and paranoid Emperor Tiberius, he was greeted with open arms. Rome had suffered under Tiberius's gloomy rule. Imagine the joy of a city when, instead of more years of paranoid purges, they got a fresh young ruler. People thought, finally, a new dawn. They were half right, though new dawn quickly turned into a blazing fireball of insanity. In the early months of his reign, Caligula was celebrated for being everything Tiberius wasn't. Charismatic, generous, and a little bit of a party boy. He abolished unfair taxes, released political prisoners, and threw lavish games to entertain the masses. Everything seemed golden. Then something snapped. Historians debate whether it was an illness, a stroke, or just a touch too much power that flipped the switch. But one day Caligula woke up and decided he was not just ruling Rome, he was Rome. And not just Rome, he was a god. In fact, he ordered statues of himself to be erected everywhere, which would have been manageable if he didn't also demand that people worship him while he was still alive. It's like your boss deciding that Monday mornings should begin with everyone lighting candles and chanting their name. Caligula also had a sense of humor, although it was the sort of humor where everyone else nervously laughed, hoping not to get executed. Take, for example, his famous horse, Incitatus. He adored that horse so much that he built it a marble stable, fed it gold-flecked oats, and dressed it in fine purple robes. You might think that's eccentric but harmless. But then he went a step further and decided to make Incitatus a senator. Yes, he genuinely believed a horse could do a better job of running Rome than most of the people in the Senate, which, if we're being honest, says a lot about his feelings toward politicians. Speaking of feelings, Caligula had intense family dynamics. He grew suspicious of just about everyone, even his own sisters. Now I know family can be complicated, but Caligula took it up several notches. He had incestuous relationships with his sisters, especially Drusilla, and when she died suddenly, he declared her a goddess, and the empire fell into deep mourning, whether out of grief or fear of the emperor's wrath was anyone's guess. By this time, Rome was starting to realize that maybe they'd backed the wrong horse. The public games that once delighted the people became spectacles of sadism, with Caligula sometimes ordering random members of the audience to be thrown into the arena for the animals to devour, just because he thought it would be amusing. Imagine going to a football game and suddenly finding yourself in the game. Only the opponents are lions, and the referee is a mad emperor. And oh, the wars, or, well, wars. At one point, Caligula decided to lead a campaign to Britain. His grand military plan? He took his legions to the coast of Gaul, lined them up facing the sea, and ordered them to attack the ocean. Yes, they spent a day stabbing the waves and collecting seashells, which Caligula triumphantly declared were spoils of war. He returned to Rome, announcing his conquest of the sea and demanded a victory parade. The Senate had to go along with it because, you know, they didn't want to be the next ones thrown to the lions. Caligula's paranoia reached new heights, and pretty soon everyone was either an enemy or expendable in his eyes. He used treason trials to eliminate rivals and refill the state treasury with confiscated wealth. You think corporate backstabbing is bad? In Caligula's Rome, even a raised eyebrow at one of his jokes might get you a one-way ticket to the afterlife. Eventually, as happens with all tyrants, Caligula's reign of madness came to a brutal end. 
In 41 AD, just shy of four years into his rule, a group of conspirators, led by officers of his own Praetorian Guard, decided they'd had enough. They cornered him in a palace hallway and stabbed him to death. His wife and infant daughter were also executed to eliminate any threats of revenge or succession. And that was it. Caligula, the emperor who ruled Rome like it was his personal playground, was gone. In the end, Caligula's life is a cautionary tale about unchecked power and the dangers of losing grip on reality when surrounded by people who are too afraid to tell you no. For a guy like you, 40 and looking back on life, maybe the lesson here is that while ambition is great, it helps if you don't crown your horse as a senator. Keep things grounded, keep your sanity, and you'll be just fine. Also, maybe don't attack the ocean. It never ends well. If you enjoyed learning these wild facts, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more incredible history content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.